Hello and welcome to WEEP instructional videos. My name is Stephanie and today we'll be learning to use the Read From File Wizard. The Read From File Wizard is useful to take large amounts of data compiled elsewhere and put them into WEEP. Today I'll be working with just the top part of my model. I've got a catchment going into a river and a flow gauge just below. Also, if I go up into general and years and time steps, I can see that my model starts in the year 2000 and goes until 2007. Now let's look at the data. I've saved several different types of data in a CSV file, which I used Excel to make. Now the first three rows are text, so WEEP is not going to read those as data. And then the data starts on the fourth row, and I formatted it to put the year and then the month, because mine is a monthly model. And WEEP will recognize this format and understand that it's not until the fourth column that it begins to actually read data. So this is considered the first data column. Also, on the first line, I've typed in dollar sign columns and then the names of my different columns with their units in brackets. This will enable WEEP to use this data more easily in the Read From File wizard. Now I'm going to close out of this because Excel puts a lock on the files it has open, so when we close the CSV file, it means we can read it. And I'll go into my data view and open up climate and precipitation. Now, in current accounts, I will click on this little white box and an arrow appears. When I click the arrow, I can see the choice for read from file wizard. So it asks me what file it wants to read. I've selected this file in my demo folder, but you can of course choose whichever one you want in your computer. So I'll open it up. And now there's a lot of information happening right now in the read from file wizard. Let's first look at the chart on the right. You can see that many of the same options are available to edit the chart as you would see elsewhere in WEEP. You can also look at the values as a table and view the text itself. Now over here, under data column, I've got the names of my different columns because I used that dollar sign columns text. And then here's my unit as well. It also has some statistics. It tells me that my data starts in January 1999 and goes until December 2007. I've got minimum and maximum values. And it will also tell me the number of missing values, which is very useful. Going back to the chart, Right now, I just have precipitation selected, but I could also select temperature or just temperature to view the different data, however I want to see it. Now, remember that we were in the precipitation tab, so I do want this to show precipitation. So under data column, I've selected one precipitation, and even though my first year in my data was 1999, the first year in my model is 2000, and we can see that WEEP has figured that out and is using the data accordingly. For both the model and for my record, the last year was 2007. You can also change the way that you view this data to look at annual total and monthly average. This is all I need to do for right now, so I'll say finish. And then I'm going to do the same thing for temperature. this time selecting column 2, and for wind speed, and again make sure that your units are the same. So here we see meters per second, and those are the same units that we'll see meters per second in our file. Wind speed. And now I'll go into my flow gauge, I'll click on it in the map, and put in the stream flow data, still using the same read from file wizard. You can also copy and paste if you want to be faster, and just change the number at the end of the column right here. So when this gets written out, I just selected column 4, so I could write in another number if I had copied and pasted. Now, this would be a great time to run my model 
and view how my stream flow data corresponds with the data that WEAP creates using the temperature, precipitation, and wind speed inputs that I put into the model. And maybe I would need to tweak some of the other data in the model, which in this case for the catchment is the soil moisture model, in order to make my modeled stream flow as close as possible to the data that I've entered. But suppose that I'd already done that, I've already calibrated my model, and I'm confident that I'm able to represent the flow in my system. Then I could start using this model to look at the future. An easy way to do that is to go back into general, years and time steps, and I'll change the length of my model to go to 2025. Now we plugged in all our data for the current accounts. Let's go back to the catchment. But if we had looked at the reference scenario, it would have showed the data out until 2007, which we had records for, so going back to climate and precipitation. But now that I've extended my model out to 2025, we don't have data for that. However, it's possible that we'd want to just cycle the same data to represent the historical climate of the past. To do this, I'll go back into current accounts and back into my read from file wizard. And because I've extended the length of the model, there's an option that appears over here that asks me if I want to cycle this data. And I'll go ahead and say cycle. So now it's going to repeat the data as many times as it needs to until the end of the model. So the data was originally starting in January 1999 until December in 2007, which means when we cycle it, January meets December, and that's a good thing. If your months don't match up, you may have to do a little more work. And then I would go ahead and create cycles within the data for temperature and wind speed as well, also in the read from file wizard. Now, there are several more advanced features of the read from file wizard, such as aggregating or disaggregating data, for instance, taking daily data and making it monthly, or filling in missing values. I encourage you to look that up in the Read From File Wizard section of the Help menu to learn more. This has been a WEEP instructional video. Good luck with your models.